What time is your appointment with the barrister? What time? Oh. Oh, good boy. Well, don't worry. We'll get there. All there right, bye-bye. Let's all go. Look, I can go on my own, you know. Mm. Don't worry. It's all under control, sort of. <laughs> I don't want to ruin the fashion show or anything. Well, you won't. Come on, eat your muesli. We've got a long morning ahead of us. I don't really feel like it. I'm like hungry Horace here. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, I'm not surprised he's got an appetite, the way he tossed and turned in his dreams last night. Oh, have you been keeping Anna awake all night? Look, I'm really sorry about all this, you know. Oh, it doesn't matter. We enjoy staying in the same room, don't we, Thomas? See, there's nothing to be sorry for. But you shouldn't have to take me to see the barrister. Not with all your work and everything. And Karen can cover for me, and Margaret's helping out as well, so there's no problem. But, but nothing. I'm coming because I want to. No rest for the wicked. Aww. Aww. Hiya. Morning. Nippy out. Yeah. Grass monkeys. Hey, do you want me to open that for you? No. Got it, no. You're breaking nail. No, I'm all right. Just. Told you so, didn't I? Come here, I'll do it for you. There you go. Tom. You're very welcome. Didn't expect you to be in this morning. Yeah, well, uh, I had a few jobs to do, didn't I? See. Here, I thought I'd give these shells a good scrub. I'd have done that for you. No thanks, I shouldn't do it myself. You're the boss. And anyway, it gives me a good excuse for being here, doesn't it? Hiya. How are you, love? How are you, love? Something wrong? No, I just couldn't bear the idea of you doing all that scrubbing on your own. I've come to give you a hand. No, you're all right, Dee. Honestly, you only need to catch licking, I promise. If the health people are sniffing around, they'll need doing properly. Dee, it'll only take me an hour, love. I'll get a bucket of hot water now. All the health people sniffing round. What do you think? Where have you hidden that scrubbing brush? I'll show you now. Oh. Hello, Diana. How are you? Okay, thanks. Angela Harry. Patricia Farnham. Three coffees, please, Kath. So, you must be a friend of Diana's? Yeah. Oh, Patricia's been really good to me. Well, take a seat. Seriously now, Diana. How are you feeling, really? Nervous. Scared. Have you been sleeping okay? Sometimes. And are you still signed off sick at work? Yeah. Good. Well, to be honest, all I want from you is a promise. That you'll relax and get your rest between now and Friday. And eat properly. I'll try. I just keep thinking about the court case. Please, let me do the thinking on that score for now. I'm just dead worried about what's going to happen. Well, there's no point in my pretending it's going to be a piece of cake. And that's exactly why you need to save your strength for when we get into court. Right. I'll try my best. And that's all any of us can do. Oh, yeah, thanks, Kat. I hope you like digestives. Yeah, lovely. Thanks. Um, so if you don't mind me asking, how do you feel things are going? Well, do you want the good news or the bad news? Bad news? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that literally. As I've said, it's going to be bloody tough once you get onto that witness stand. Now, we've been through all our evidence, and as long as you answer the questions in the way that I've asked you to, that part shouldn't be too bad. But, as soon as I step down and the defending barrister gets up, that's when your trial really starts. That's when you're on your own. What do you think he'd be like with me? It's a she, not a he. That's another little ploy they'll use on the jury. And she'll be the same as I would be in her shoes. She'll be ruthless. But there's a good chance of conviction. No rape case is ever cut and dried. And the trouble with a date rape like this is that the law still classifies it as a common or garden assault. So, you see, when the jury walks into that courtroom expecting to hear the details of their idea of how a rape's carried out, and we present a very different picture in our evidence, well, there's always a chance of the so what factor coming into play. So what? Mm, you know, so where's the wild-eyed madman covered in tattoos? Where's the balaclava, the bruises? 
Where's the body left for dead on deserted waste ground? Please, that's horrible. What on earth are you up to? Well, I thought I'd ever go making an um, authentic pizza base. It's authentically crap, Ellis. <laughs> well, maybe I should stick to the ready-made in future. <laughs> yeah, good idea. So, um, to what do I owe this unexpected pleasure? I had to call into Brookside Comp and seeing as I was in the area. You thought you'd drop in on your favourite dough boy. Got it in one. So what are you up to tonight? Oh, I'm slaving over a hot oven, I'm afraid. What, all night? Sorry, babe. No Mick? No Mick, no Mike Dixon. Just little old me. Well, if you play your cards right, I might just come over later and hold your spatula for you. <laughs> promises, promises. <laughs> so was Mick OK about the Christmas situation? Well, he didn't exactly jump for joy when I told him I wasn't going to be around to kiss him under the mistletoe. But he understood. Oh, you know, Mick, just grin and bear it. You don't have to come to my parents, you know. Oh, I'll miss it for the world. Great. I just worry about that boy. Wish he wasn't going to be alone. Yeah, doesn't get much light relief, does he? All he needs is the love of a good woman. What about your sister? She's spoken for, like me. Let's have a look in my little black book, see what I can come up with. You've got a little black book, have you? Might have. Well, if you don't want a face full of dough, I suggest you um, fling it in the oven, along with your next pizza. OK? Jawohl. Number five makes ten. Right. Spotless them shelves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you could eat your dinner off them, love. Talking of which, I'll uh, pinch a tin of this soup and head on home and have mine. Yeah, good. Hey, you deserve to put your feet up for half an hour. <laughs> I'll finish cleaning up for you. Thanks. Hey, our girls, how about this one? What's green and invisible? Go on. This cabbage. <laughs> That's terrible. I thought it was quite funny myself. Hey, you want to get air down the legion, you'll need someone to support you with jokes like that. Hey, that's not a bad idea, that. How do you fancy forming a one-woman fan club for me then, Jack? You're right. No, really? Come down and have a drink with us tonight. We had a laugh last week. Oh, I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm expecting Jimmy back from Birmingham any minutes. More reason to be out from what Ron's told me. And what would that be? I'll just, you know, about him going AWOL, like. Oh. Uh, well, if you change your mind, you know where we are. Yeah, Tom. OK. Ta-ra, then. Yeah, ta-ra, love. Thanks for all the help. Thought she was going to be here all day. She's every right. And you shouldn't be talking to her about me and Jimmy. Couldn't help it, Jack. Um, what are you doing now? Yeah, well, we can't be talking with all hands coming in and out the shop every five minutes, can we? Come on, through to the back. Um, open the door. Come on. People will be trying to get in. We've had a spillage, haven't we? Can't have them walking on a wet floor. It's dangerous. God's sake, Ron! Ah, I don't want the environmental health on me back, do I, Jackie? What do you want to talk about? Me and you. Is there a me and you? Well, I think so, yeah. You haven't seen the way it's just been with Dee Dee. Jackie, I'm not talking about Dee Dee. I'm talking about us. The last time we were alone together in this shop. It was only a kiss, Ron. Only? Yeah. And that's it, like. I never said that. Didn't you like kissing me? Yeah. I never said that either. Because I like kissing you. <laughs> I know. In fact, I'd like to kiss you right now. Ron. I couldn't wait to get in here today, Jack. <sighs> Slow down, Ron. I can't. Well, you'll have to. Why? Aren't you interested? I don't know. Well, yeah, I'm... I wouldn't have kissed you if I wasn't. So you did enjoy it, then? Yes. But it was only a kiss. Not to me, it wasn't. It'll have to be for now. For now? I still have had time to think. I don't want to be the cause of any upset between you and Dee Dee. Look, you won't. Can we settle for a kiss, Sally? See how we get on. All right, but on one condition. 
that you come to the Legion tonight with me and Dee Dee. If you insist. Yeah? Oh, hi, yeah. Right. Fine. How'd you get up to the flat without buzzing me? Oh, some fellow was on his way out, so I just walked straight past him. Hey, you want to watch that, you know? You've been Christmas shopping? No. How's the baby? Oh, fine. I've just put him down. He's as smelly as ever. But he's lovely with it. He's a spit of you, you know. No. He's far better looking than that, aren't you, Stephen? Oh, here yeah, look. I've got you some uh, chocolates. Oh, Tom. Shouldn't you have skied in through the window with them? Yeah, I'm a bit old for all that lark now. Lamb chops for tea, all right? Great. So, what have you been buying? I've just got some stuff for the baby. Oh. Oh, that's lovely. Hey, thanks. And there's uh, a few more toys and that in there. You shouldn't have. But I got you that, um, you know, that special sterilising unit you were on about. Terry? Oh, what? Is it the wrong one? No, it's not. It's great. It... I just didn't want you to think I was hinting for anything, that's all. I don't. I mean, that's just... Well, the baby needs stuff, doesn't he? It's up to me to get it. Yeah, I know, but... Look, I didn't get back in touch with you because I need the money. I just thought it'd be nice to see you, that's all. Well, it is, isn't it? Yeah. We get by me and Stephen. We're not a charity case. Um, do you want me to take the stuff back, then? No, of course not. I'm really grateful. It come in ever so handy. Ta. I'll go and check them chops, eh? Now, there is just one last thing. It's concerning your husband. It's Rod, isn't it? Now, I know you've been having some marital difficulties, but has he been in touch at all? No. And you've vacated the family home? It's been sold. The number you got for me is with Patricia. I dare not stay with us until all this is over. You've had no contact with your husband since the assault? He's in hall. So there's no prospect of a reconciliation? Is Rod a problem? No, no, no. No. It's just that a reunion of sorts might have helped our case. But if he's permanently out of the picture, we're better off steering clear. I don't think there's any chance of us getting back together now. No. I'm sorry about that. Now, do you have any last questions for me before we wrap up? There is just one. Far away. If he is found guilty, how long will he get? Oh, well, that depends on the judge. The accused has got a good family background. He's a nice, white, middle-class boy. But he's on a rape charge, so he could get as much as a seven-year sentence, wherever he comes from. And uh, how long do you expect the trial to last? Oh, not long. The court's closed for Christmas. It should be over by then. And if it goes the way I think it will, my Christmas present to Diana will be Peter Harrison. Gift wrapped behind bars. Here you go, ladies. Rub and pep and one martini in that. You're very welcome. Right, better make me announcements. Oh, can't forget your announcements. Where's this tuxedo we've heard so much about? Ah, now that's just for the weekend now. For the odd night during the week, I'm all right like I am. Casual, but smart. Have <laughs> you ever seen anything like it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Testing. Right, uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome once again to Bingo Night at the British Legion. You tell me was going on a diet this morning. Now, uh, I'm due to uh, call the first house in 15 minutes, if I can get me balls sorted out, that is. I wouldn't mind, so but the flabbiest thing about him is his jokes. Or your eyes <laughs> tested or get a bit of lead put in your pencil, now's the time to do it, and we'll be back in a few minutes. See you then. He's not that bad. <laughs> you should try living with him. <laughs> Can't be any worse than my fella. Oh, no, if you mess me around like your Jimmy does you. Mm. So, how's me two fat ladies, then? Still busy? Oh, yeah. Just a few last-minute alterations to the table plan for the show. I've finished my work. Would it be all right to put on a CD? Um, I I'd rather you didn't. Diana's having a nap upstairs. I don't want to wake her. OK. Why don't you put a tape on in your room? 
Thomas is in my room, remember? Oh, right, sorry. Um, well, perhaps if you kept the volume low. Doesn't matter. Uh, I think I'll fund for a pizza. Do you want something? Uh, nothing for me, thanks. Hello. Do you have a nice nap? Yeah. All those questions must have worn me out. Anna was just going to go for a pizza. Do you want anything? Mm, I think I've got a bit of my appetite back. Aren't you having it delivered? No, it's uh, quicker to order it and to pick it up myself. I'll go with you then. It's OK. No, you shouldn't walk around. I'm on your own in the dark. I'll be fine. No, I don't mind. I'll do with the fresh air. Hola, Joel. Lucky seven. All the sixes, pickety click. 66. I don't even want a full house. Four and two, 42. Oh, me and all. One and six, never been kissed. Sweet 16. That's it. Yeah. Oh, I needed one. House call by the beautiful young lady on my right. Can I just check that card, please? Thank you. Lucky, wasn't it? Hey, luck doesn't come into it. This is kismet. Knack. Oh. Well, you must be bored stiff. Mm, I'm okay. Conversation's not up to much. Well, thanks a lot. If I'm promised a night out next week, I might stick around. Definitely, on Wednesday. Well, Mike's free from college now, so I can get him to do a double shift. Great. What should we do? I'll think of something. Pizza's almost ready. Three ninety-five, please. Your Christmas decorations look nice. Thanks very much. Did it myself. Clever lad, isn't he? I think we'll be putting ours up in the Farnham soon. Ah, uh, you better not leave it too late. The season of uh, Christmas parties and drink driving is upon us. In fact, we're having our Christmas do on Wednesday night. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just an exclusive affair, you know, very intimate. But I'm sure we could find room for two of our most prized customers. <laughs> I'm serious, what do you say? Come along, it'd be a laugh. Well, I don't know. Well, what about you, Diana? Oh, I don't think so. I've got something on on Wednesday. Oh, come on, Anna, live a little. Well, who else will be going? Oh, it's just our little crew. No one else. Well, I suppose I could ask Patricia for the evening off. I could mind Thomas for you if you like. I thought you were busy on Wednesday. I am, um, but Ellis, he's so pushy sometimes, isn't he? Do you want this cut into four? Uh, no, thanks. There you are, then. And uh, I'll pick you up on Wednesday night, say, uh, 8 o'clock. OK, fine. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And, then, um, what exactly was all that about? You know, I even surprise myself sometimes. Well, where did the Christmas party appear from all of a sudden? It didn't. There isn't one. Well, there is. A little candlelit dinner for, uh, four. Me, you, Mick and, uh, Anna. Liz, you can't just fix him up with the first girl that comes in off the streets for a pizza. Why not? She's a good-looking girl. It put a smile on his face. Well, not that she's got any say in the matter. Oh, he's a Johnson. It'll be cool, don't worry. I hope so, because if it isn't, it'll be you that takes the rap. Another one, Dean? Mm. No, thanks. You don't mind if I get off soon, do you? Aren't you going to stay for the last house? i to go and see if we've still got a house. Don't like leaving Jackie and Tony on their own too long. I won't be able to run you till I've finished here, love. Well, it's all right. I'll get a cab. You sure? I'll uh, share it with you if you like. Can you stay here? Keep him company. Anyway, looks like it's your lucky night. Uh, do you want me to get you one? No, I'll go to the loo first. There's a phone next to the ladies. See you in a minute. Well, looks like it's my lucky night now. Well, please don't talk like that the minute she's turned her back. Sorry. Probably be more relaxed when she's gone anyway. Yeah. Fancy another drink? Yeah. Look, uh, once the bingo's over, you know, all I gotta do is pack the mic up. I can run your home then. It'll give us an hour on our own. That'd be nice. And I've got a little proposition for you as well. Get you that drink, eh? Take the rum and pep, please, Steve. So, uh, things all right, yeah? Good. Yeah, cheers. Hi, Jax. Jimmy. You all right? Uh, yeah. What's happened to your face? Oh, that, uh, it's not. Had a bit of a run-in with that John Allison one, you know. I got your notes. Uh, where's Ron? He's at the bar. 
Seen Didi on the way up there? Yeah. Listen, if you catch him off, we'll get you a pint. Oh, right. OK, yeah. All right, Ronnie. Jimmy, I thought you were in Birmingham. Yeah, I was, yeah. Should I fancy a bevy? No, you're all right. Sit down, I'll get me on. What's he doing here? I didn't know to say where I was. A note? Force of Abyss. Anyway, imagine if you'd driven us back to mine and he turned up after blue. So I won't be able to take it on then, will I? Away. Not again. What's that 5 0? Afraid so. Oh, couldn't we play snap or something? I was hoping we could move on to chess. Oh, I'm not the fella for that, I'm afraid. I'll teach you if you like. All right, you're on. Good. Hope little Steve's got your brains, you know. Stephen. As long as he hasn't inherited Barry's heart, I don't care. Hey, no, I want a nearly New Year's resolution from you that you'll never use that B word again. You're on. Right, I'm off. Oh, time flies, eh? Hey, and I hope the next time I see you that the decorations are up all right. If I get the chance. Well, I can't talk. I've left Derek to do them in half flat. <laughs> so when will the next time be? Eh, uh, whenever. Later this week? Yeah, great. OK, I'll ring you. All right. Eh, uh, Fran? Yep. Oh, why did you get in touch with me after all this time? Well, you're me mate. I mean, you've been good to me through all that crap with you, Nemo. I wanted to see how you were doing. I wanted you to see the baby. And I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't lonely. Uh, I'd better shoot off. Uh, give the baby a kiss for me, eh? Yeah. I'll see ya. Hello. Honest babe, I'm sorry for all this mess. Two and five, twenty-five. Oh, yeah. And what can I do? I work for Barry. He calls the shots. Kelly's eye. Number one. Try to play bingo, are you? Listen, from now on, I'll get notice if he wants me to go to Birmingham. Or anywhere else. 4 0, blind 40. I don't know if I want there to be a now on anymore. Don't say that, Jax. 7 and 3, 73. Okay. Two chili. Two little ducks, 22. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's make a move. Five and two. Fifty-two. I'm looking for some. Thirteen. Brookside will be back on Living at the same time tomorrow. Still to come this afternoon at 3.30 in Judge Judy, there's a dispute over used baby things. And at 4 o'clock in The Real Holiday Show, there's tears, tantrums, all happening in Turkey. Now, earlier on, we were talking about Catherine Zeta-Jones and her incredible shrinking form. She's lost three and a half stone just 11 and a half weeks after having baby Dylan, apparently on the high-protein diet. And I've been asking you, so what did you do when you'd had a baby? Did you manage to get her back into shape? And if so, how? Give me a call or email me. Uh, Alison has phoned. She says she's had four children and she's now on the low carbohydrate, high protein diet as well. Skiving, are you? Oh, yeah, of course I am. So you're right for tonight? Oh, I'm not so sure, you know. Oh, come on. You can't miss your own staff Christmas party. I can when it means I'm going to be the chief gooseberry. I can guarantee you will not be like that. Oh, I don't know. Marcy's already said she'll look after the kids. I've asked her. Marianne's going to be really disappointed if you don't come. Oh, go on, then. So where is we're going to, then? Uh, Bertolucci's, eh? Yeah. For a, a pasta extravaganza. Well, look, don't bother picking me up. I'll see you down there. I wasn't going to. I'll see you there at eight. See you, bro. All right, Jimmy. 
Oh, well, look who it isn't. Barry Grant's can, lad. Well, I wish I'd got as much job satisfaction as you seem to do. I didn't know the mob suits were back in fashion, Jim. Hey, listen. <laughs> hope you're not getting my missus shifting that stuff. No, I'm not. Good. But she needs looking after. She's not a skivvy, you know. Hey, I'd make a better job of it than you do, lad. <sighs> you will? <laughs> Look at the state of this place. <laughs> and Sarah will be arriving any minute. Sarah Green's coming here. Yeah, she's working in Liverpool today, so she's given me an hour to brief her for tomorrow. Brilliant. Mm, except that she'll think we live in a bomb site. She'll understand. I hope so. Oh, can you remind me to phone Karen over at the hotel in about an hour? Uh, excuse me, Patricia? Mm. Um, sorry, uh, Patricia. That's my name. Um, these cards. Oh, everyone's sitting at the right table, aren't they? Um, well, yeah, but I've just got to your table and... Mr P Farnham, Mrs M Farnham, Mr Sarah Green. I don't believe that they've given every single guest a sex change. I shouldn't think people will notice. But I can't put these out, can I? Oh, I'm sorry, what am I going to do? Give the princes a ring, see what they've got to say about oh, it. This is a nightmare, would you? I don't think I can trust myself to speak to them. I need an aspirin. Patricia? Yeah? Uh, could I have a word about tomorrow? I can't get through. Why not? Everyone else is. I don't think I'm going to be able to look after Thomas. What? He's still engaged. Can, can you keep trying? Well, I've got to go to court. I've been asked to be a witness at Peter Harrison's trial. I see. I suppose I don't have to ask for which side. For the defence. Cheers, Jack. <laughs> Think I bit off a bit more than I could chew here. <laughs> You're not kidding. Do you want a hand with that loss? No, no. Can't have your Jimmy calling me a slave driver, can I? Eh? Ah, uh, not. You've been a while. Busy at the wholesalers. Chocker. Why'd you miss me? Wrong. Because I think I've got away where we wouldn't have to miss each other for a couple of days. What are you talking about? You know, last night down the Legion, I told you that I had a little proposition for you. Before the other fella came in. Yeah, I know. Well, how'd you fancy a trip to sunny Yorkshire? What? This weekend to the Harrogate Business Fair. Harrogate? Yeah. It's probably just a glorified booze up for shopkeepers, but it's perfect, isn't it? We could get the train over, book into a nice hotel. A nice hotel? Uh, when did we suddenly start talking about hotels, Ron? Yeah, all right, all right. I know I'm sorry, but I just can't stop thinking about it all. About us. <laughs> We haven't even decided if there is an us yet. I have. And I think deep down you feel the same. We get on great, don't we? We could have something together. You had a case? Yes, I told you that's ideal. I told Dee Dee I wasn't keen on going, but I can soon square that with her. So if you go off sick for me, I'll get somebody in to cover for you. And we're away. Got us all worked out, eh? Boy Scout, wasn't I? Dip, dip, dip. <laughs> What about Jimmy? Well, he'd be too busy running around wiping Barry Grant's nose for the money. Yeah, I suppose so. So you'd be able to come up with a good excuse, wouldn't you? I don't know. I haven't had much practice. <laughs> Neither have I, Jack. That's just a thing. I've never done anything like this before in my life. And look how complicated it is already. Look, all right, don't say yes right away. I'll tell you what, I'll get this lot shifted. Then I'll go and see Dee Dee and I'll check the train times. And I'll come back and see you when we're closing up. How does that sound to you? We'll see, eh? Still engaged. I reckon they must have the phone off the hook. Oh, great. That's all I need. Transsexual guests. I could swing for those bloody printers. Listen, I'll pop round there, see what they've got to say. I should go. No, you see to your guest. I'll only be a minute. You've done more than your fair share already. You're meant to be on your holiday. Don't mind. And what about Derek? I'm sure he'd like to see a bit more of you. As long as I'm happy, he's happy. Oh, thanks. See ya. Bye. Um, what time is your guest arriving? Soon. I've, um, sorted the Thomas problem out, by the way. The hotel's got a crash. They'll be happy to have him while we're at the show. Oh, good. What time are you due in court? 
first thing, they don't know exactly what time I'll be called. Uh, it is all right, isn't it? Uh, I did say if I was asked to be a witness, I'd go. Yeah, nothing to do with me. They just want me to tell the court what I saw, that's all. The same as they want Max to. Except that Max is a prosecution witness, of course. Oh, here she is. Have you seen who that is? Oh, it's not, is he? Bye. Bye-bye. Hello. Hello. Hi, Patricia. Thanks for coming. Did you come up this yeah. morning? Yes, first thing. Oh, very early, actually. Yes, it is early. Who's this? This is my son, Thomas. Hello. And um, his nanny, Anna. Hello. Hi. Anyway, come in. Hi. I'll try to make it as brief come as possible. It's carving. See the queen, do you want to hear? Do you know? I'm going to phone Leanne and tell her. Yeah, all right. Hey, she's still going on about being pregnant. <laughs> She'll be telling us it's Philip Schofield next. Listen, hang on there, it won't be a minute. Yeah, all right. Are you all set for tomorrow? Oh, yes. My lawyers rehearsed me to death. I'm under orders to wear a sober suit and a sensible tie. I'm sure it'll be OK. Yeah, I'm glad somebody thinks so. Oh, your parents do too. Oh, yeah, but it's been a bit too much strain for Dad. He had to see a doctor today about his asthma. Is he all right? Yeah, but it's touch and go whether he'll make court tomorrow. Well, I'll be there. I really do appreciate your support, you know. Can't have been easy living over there. Well. Not as hard as it must have been for you, or accused of a crime you didn't commit. I'll tell that to the jury. You got time for a coffee? Uh, yeah, thanks. Basically, the day's pretty straightforward. Um, fashion show, lunch, and then the celebrity prize auction, which is where you come in. Well, as long as I can have one of those little silver hammers to play with, I'll be quite happy. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. And if you could say a few words about the personal services organisation before we start the action, it would be great. Fine. Um, if you give me some idea of what you'd like me to say, just enough to prick their consciences and their checkbooks. Patricia! Mm. In here. No, I've just seen Anna with Tom. Hello. Hello. My husband, Max, Sarah Green. Hello. Nice to meet you. Uh, I've got the uh, Christmas decorations. Good. What was that you were saying about Anna? Oh, um, I've just seen her take our son into Peter Harrison's. Oh, God. The local Romeo? Uh, not exactly, no. Anyone for coffee? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Jimmy, give me the phrase of my life. Sorry, but I've got something to say to you. Like what? Like I'm sick of all this crap between us. You've hardly said a word to me since I got back. What's brought all this on? I don't know. But I want you to know that I'm not trying to mess you around. And I'm not trying to get into anything dodgy. I just want the best for you and for me. And Barry Grant. Yeah, OK. And for Barry Grant and all. But look, if you don't like it, just say the word. And I'll go straight up to his office and tell him to sling his hook. Are you serious? You just tell me what you want me to do, Jackie and I'll do it. I can't say further than that, can I? That's how much you mean to me. That all looks fine. I'll put together a speech tonight, OK? Oh, that's great, thanks. That's looking good. Yeah, all for Thomas's benefit, of course. Of course. <laughs> Sarah, I hope you don't mind me asking, but did you ever meet Valerie Singleton? Yes, once or twice. Why? No, it's just I had a bit of a thing about her, you know. As a ten-year-old, you understand. I see. Once wrote to her personally, asking if she'd come round to my house for tea and pin a Blue Peter badge on my lapel. <laughs> really? Was it was a magpie fan myself. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to check if it's OK to give Thomas his bath now. I'm going out later. With Peter Harrison? No, with Ellis Johnson and his girlfriend. Yes, yeah, of course, that's fine. Magpie. That was Susan Stranks, wasn't it? How are you, Dee? I wish you lot would clean up after yourselves. This bath's rotten. Oh, well, that'll be our Jacqueline, that won't it? She's never had the thing. <laughs> you think she'd see enough water at work? You're all just as bad. Listen, not there. How'd you fancy getting shot at me for a couple of days? <laughs> if only. 
No, serious, you know. Uh, look, you'd probably find this hard to believe, but well, I thought that I'd finally take a bit of notice of you, you know, for a change. Why? Yeah, and I thought I'd go up to that Arrogate business fair thing after all, you know. Oh, change your mind? Well, I'll probably pick up a few tricks of the trade. I mean, I don't know everything. Really? Mm. And anyway, uh, I met this old mate of mine down the wholesale. As you know, he goes every year. He reckons it's a hoot. Oh, so that's why you're going. So you can drink yourself stupid with a gang of shopkeepers. A bit harsh, that, isn't it? Did you think I was born yesterday? Well, might just have the odd social drink, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all right, then? Oh, I don't see why not. Oh, nice one. I wonder what the new people will be like in the Cork Hills. Oh, I don't know. I swear to Sarah Greenland. Oh, she's still on the forums. Oh, isn't he I? I felt ashamed. I walked into a shelf at the petrol station. Oh, you TV. Who's that saw that? That's not really. So, she brought Philip Schofield with her then? <coughs> I've told you. So, to what? Eh, uh, nothing. Still, um, pregnant. If by that you mean if I come on you. No. You still haven't had your periods? No. So, I bought one of these. Away, TV. Well, we'll soon see if I'm pregnant or not, won't we? Yeah, here she is. Thanks ever so much for taking the time out to come over. It's no problem at all. I think it's better to get it all sorted out on front, don't yeah. you? Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. Um, excuse me, are you Sarah Green? Yes, yeah, nice to meet you. What's Lewis going to feel like? <laughs> it's just like you'd imagine. Here you are. Told you. Would you like an autograph, girls? No, thanks. Yeah, I'm. Lord. Afternoon, Maxie. Hey, didn't realise you were mixing in celebrity circles these days. He isn't. I am. Sarah Green, this is Ron Dixon, our next-door neighbour. And renowned businessman of this parish. And this is me daughter, Jackie. Oh, pleased to meet you. <laughs> Pleasure's all mine, Sarah. Pleasure's all mine. So, uh, anyway, what are you doing around this neck of the woods? Um, I've organised a charity lunch. Sarah's our guest of honour. Oh, a charity lunch, eh? You must have forgot to post our invite to that one, eh, Maxie? Well, it's not for free, Ron. Uh, you pay for a table and you give the money to charity. Well, well I'd have bought a table, wouldn't I? If I'd have been asked. Well, I don't think it's too late. Uh, there might be a table left, eh, Patricia? Sorry? Say no more. How much are we talking? Fifty pounds. How oh, well, it's for charity, isn't it? Per head, it's five hundred a table. Five hundred quid? Was that the phone? Eh, no. I'll have to go and get it. Nice meeting you anyway, Sarah. And you, Ron. You're coming, girls. Sorry about that. No problem. Well, bye-bye. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks again. Yeah, bye-bye. Oh, yeah? Hello. A bit cold out there at the moment. Hmm? Can I have a packet of cigarette papers, please? Ran out this morning. I've been gasping for a smoke all day. Those ones just behind you'll be fine, thanks. I'm not saving the likes of you. What do you mean? I know what you are. And what's that? <laughs> you can go and get your fag papers somewhere else. Could I have a packet of cigarette papers, please? I just hope there's a few women on that jury. So she left ages ago. Well, now you're here, perhaps you could persuade my wife to take a break for five minutes. Any joy? Yep, I've sorted it. They've redone them all. Watched them do it. You're joking. No, I just stood there and said, I'm not leaving until she's a missus again and he's a mister. How did you swing that? Well, I just asked him what sort of publicity it'd be for him if we all had Dove name cards. I definitely owe you one. I'm just nipping to the loo anyway. Hey. Yeah. Oh, you look pretty enough to go on top of our tree, Anna. Oh, thank you. What time are you going out? In a couple of minutes. Well, don't be about too late. You've got to go to court in the morning. I'm uh, sorry, Patricia. Do you have a problem with my being a witness tomorrow? No. You have every right to give evidence in defence of whoever you like. What I do have a problem with, however, is you taking my son into the home of a man accused of rape. Peter didn't rape anybody. Well, we'll let the jury decide that, shall we? I still don't want my child anywhere near him. Oh, well, perhaps it would be better if I moved, then. I don't know. Perhaps it would. Now, let's not get into something we might later regret. Oh, why do you approve of your three-year-old being taken to visit the local rapist? No, no, of course not. Not in the least. But I... You can't stop her from seeing somebody if she wants to. I don't know. Perhaps it would be better if Anna were to take an extended Christmas break, at least until the trial is over. On full pay, of course. That's a bit drastic, isn't it? 
No, thank you. I prefer to stay. I have friends who might need me to be around. Well, that's my lift outside. Bye. Oi, what's she doing? She's been in there ages. Well, maybe she's still trying to have a wee. Come on, Leanne? Leanne? Leanne, you all right? Jackie? Eh, uh, yeah. Do you girls want a cup of tea? Eh, uh, no thanks. It's gone blue. So I'm pregnant. Are you enjoying your tagging telly? Mm, thanks. I think this has got the edge on our version of Italian cuisine, eh, mate? Yeah. Are you going anywhere for Christmas, Anna? No, I'll be staying at the farm. How about you? Just home for a week or so. And Marianne's taking me to her mum and dad's. That'll be nice. Which does mean there'll be a spare place round the mix come Christmas Day. I'm sure if you uh, play your cards right, he'll let you come round and pull his wishbone. Take no notice. Have a glass of wine, have you? I think I'll uh, probably be eating it. The oh, don't worry about it. Well, I think on that note, I'll just uh, use the ladies. Excuse me. I think I'll come with you. Okay. Excuse me. So, what do you reckon to Miss Poland then? What am I meant to reckon? Whatever you like. All right. What's wrong with you? I'd rather be a gooseby than be set up like a mug. Oh, is that all the thanks I get? I thought you'd be happy of a bit of solidarity with a luscious Anna. Yeah, we'll think again. In fact, in future, don't think at all. Sorry about the mess before. He lays on the swam a touch thick sometimes. It's okay. Though I was a bit embarrassed. Don't be. But this is what I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, you've been set up. I know. I'm really sorry. It had nothing to do with Mick. It was Alice's idea. Not all of his better ones. Mm, just about par for the course, I'd say. Um, do you think Mick would understand if we left as soon as we'd eaten? I don't really want to have a late night. Understand? I think he'd be positively relieved. <laughs> Come on, Liam. You're all right. Do you want me to take the... Listen, have you told Paul yes? You'll have to tell him sometime. He hasn't been near for us to tell him. But you want to tell him? Oh, no chance. He's had what he's wanted. Oh, I hate him. What are we going to do? My mum and dad are going to kill me. Guess where I've been? Go on. Lime Street Station. Oh. Booking two train tickets to Harrogate. First class. I thought you said you'd give us a chance to think about it. Yeah, yeah well, once I'd squared it with Dee Dee, you know, I couldn't wait. <laughs> what did you say to her? Well, who cares as long as we get together? I care, Ron. I don't like deceiving people. I don't like having to sort my story out to make sure it fits in with yours. I don't like the idea of working here every day, expecting your wife to walk in, accusing me of all sorts. I don't like any of this. You liked me enough to kiss me, though, didn't you? Yeah, I know. Well, maybe it was all a big mistake. Ah, uh, you don't mean that, do you? Ron, don't. Jimmy Stew here in a minute. What are you wasting your time with him for? Cos I care about him. But you deserve better. Oh, and what's better? A weekend in Harrogate with a married man. Oh, come on, Jack. We'll have a great time. And you care about Dee Dee, don't you? Do you want to see her get his? None of this needs to hurt anybody if we play it right. Yeah, well, that's the problem, Ron. I'm not into games. So that's it, then? I'm sorry. I can't go with you. Why? Cos I'm not a liar or a marriage wrecker. And anyway, I think I'm going to patch it up with Jimmy again. 
Don't even get a good night kiss then. Go home to your wife. Huh? You fancy coffee? Oh, um. No, but thank you. I, I said I'd nip over and see Peter Harrison. Thanks for coming, anyway. Thanks for asking me. Well, bye, then. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. Sorry. Some matchmakers you two are. It's worth a try. What was? I mean, the girl's going up with Peter Harrison anyway, by the look of it. Well, better luck next time, eh? What next time? Look, shall we talk about it over a coffee? No, and there's nothing to talk about. And next time, go make a complete dick out of someone else, will you? Oh, hi. Just thought I'd call round and wish you luck for tomorrow. Thanks. How was your evening? Oh, terrible. Present. Yeah, I know. What if I do that? What if it all goes wrong? What if, what if they find me guilty? Tense, isn't it? Well, Brookside is back the same time tomorrow here on Living. And also, we've got Judge Judy coming up today at 3.30. And don't forget, she's here at 5 as well. We've got the Real Holiday Show at 4. Three women are going to Egypt, two boys are going camping, and a couple are going nuding it. Nuding it? They're doing own natural. Own natural. Oh, I see. Yeah, right. in France. Yeah. It's all happening this afternoon. Now, earlier on, we were talking about some of the items in the news, particularly the government's plans to bring in paid paternity leave for a fortnight um, uh, after the baby's born. And I've got a telephone call here from Claire May, who says, I think that fathers are entitled to two weeks off and they should also get paid. However, there are some places that make you take it off as holiday. Well, it's hardly that, is it's it? It's not, is it? I mean, people like to really? sleep on their holidays yes. and rest. You don't do that with a new baby, do you? Absolutely no yes. chance. It's not that I know, because so, I haven't got one. So. so we want to know what happened in... Street. Um, yeah, it is now. You don't think it's too bright, do you, uh, in the circumstances? No. no. I just don't want to come back and get changed before meeting up with you. Why, what time are you giving evidence? I don't know. Don't know. Coffee, Diana? Please. Has your barrister indicated what time I might be called? Sorry, she hasn't. Oh, Have you phoned Margaret? <gasps> Damn it, I forgot. I'll do it now. <sighs> it's a bit late for an invite, isn't it? No, well, you never know. Very smart, Anna. Thank you. As we all do, really, don't we? Uh, Thomas is dressed and ready. Good. So if you don't need me anymore, I'd better be off. Fine. You sure you don't want to live to the uh, court? No, I'm all right. It's just Diana and I, we're heading off in a minute. I've uh, already got a lift sorted out uh, with the Harrisons. Oh. Guess I know how Mike Tyson felt now. Please, Peter, no jokes. Sorry. I'd better see if Anna still wants a lift. Morning. Hello. Hello. Uh, 
Are we waiting for Mr. Harrison? Oh, no. He's feeling a bit under the weather. The doctor thought it best if he didn't come to the court. Shall we go? Do you want them? Hey, I don't want anything. I've just come to take you to lunch. I haven't finished my breakfast yet. Bit of a charity do, fashion show. Be a few faces there, nose bag. What do I want to go to a fashion show for? Let's have a look at the lovely girls up on the stage, same as the rest of us. I'm busy. Fifty pound a ticket, sir. Big wow. I'm still busy. And while you're up, sir. Listen, that. Oh, yeah. Sounds interesting. Not to a man with your superstar lifestyle. I'm always interested in what you get up to, sir. Mm. The Guardian Angel, eh? But sensitive this morning, aren't we? No more than usual. So what is it, then, that's that interesting that you don't want to come with me and have a look at these gorgeous girls up on the catwalk? Let's be shopping. What are you getting me? You'll be lucky. But you someone will. What do you mean? I keep my ears open, Terry. I know what you've been up to. You know, to nothing. I'm dead boring, me. You're a dark horse, aren't you? If you've got something to say, say it. I'm not saying anything. I'm just a bit insulted, that's all. What do you mean? Well, when you may get a new girlfriend, you expect an insult, don't you? And when you don't get one, you think there might be something wrong with you. Oh, I see. Suppose you've sussed me out, haven't you? Oh, don't worry about it. I understand. I mean, when you get into someone, uh, you want to keep them for yourself, don't you? Uh, yeah, that's right. But you can't keep it under wraps forever, sir. Yeah, I know. Hiya. Hiya. Oh, busy? Hi, yeah, not bad. I've uh, sold a few boxes of them Christmas crackers. Oh, good. Look, I can't hang around. I've got to meet Dee Dee in town this afternoon. We're getting the kids Christmas presents. Town will be packed. Yeah, probably. Have you had your hair done? Uh, yeah. I'm um, going out for a meal tonight with Jimmy. Yeah. Anyway, it looks lovely. See ya. Yeah. Oh, there's Sarah. And surprise, surprise, look who's latched himself onto. I wonder what her speech will be like. Hiya. Margaret, you made it. Yep. I'm sorry I left it so late. Patricia was telling me about the printers. I'm impressed. <laughs> well, thanks for inviting me. After all the hard work you've done, it should be us thanking you. Where am I sitting? At the top table with us and Sarah Green. Mm. <laughs> right, let's go and introduce myself then. Oh, too late to turn back now. Mm. Here's to nothing. If you don't mind, Diana, would you tell the court your idea before the events concerning this case took place of what a rape might be like? Mm, just what you read in the papers, really. In the newspapers? Yes. You know, about fellas late at night attacking women with knives and everything. Yeah, by that, I, I take it that you mean the classic, for want of a better phrase, um, violent rape scenario. Isolated woman, brutal aggressor, the attack carried out away from the comparative safety and security of a familiar environment. Yes, yes, that's what I mean. And up until approximately seven weeks ago, would you say that you were aware of any other kind of rape being reported in the same way as the one that you've described? You hear about fellas raping their wives and that. What about date rape, Diana? I might have heard about it, yeah. And did you know roughly what it entailed? No, I didn't. So, if I'd asked you under oath seven or so weeks ago to explain to me the concept of date rape, would you have been able to give me an adequate description? No, I don't think I would. Would you mind describing to the jury what you think a date rape is? It's when you go out with somebody who you know, who forces themselves on you, even though you've said no to sex. That was a very succinct way of putting it, Diana. Thank you. However, there is still one thing that confuses me slightly. You said that you would have been unable to give such a description only a few weeks ago. 
What has changed in that short time to give you such an insight into this heinous crime? Because it happened to me. I was date raped. And now the rest of the best of the Armani Collection. What do you think then, sir? Yeah, I quite like some of this Armani stuff. Yeah, it's all that's good, then. Nice to see you looking after our guest of honour for us. Well, I'm doing my best, you know. I'm sure you are. Can I can do, isn't it? I'm surprised you managed to make it on time. Oh, you still haven't got a knock on about last week, have you? <laughs> I haven't got a knock on about anything. Couldn't get a better offer of Jimmy Corker, then, eh? Your messenger boy, at least he turned up. Oh, well, I'm uh, sorry, it won't happen next time. <laughs> next time? Oh, it's like that, is it? Ladies and gentlemen, a nice round of applause for the boys and girls on the catwalk today. If we could, Diana, I'd like to move on now to Wednesday the 21st of October, the night of a party held at Seven Brookside Close. Were you at that party? I'd been invited, but I wasn't going to go. Why not? I was still down about Rod. Ooh. What or who changed your mind? Peter. He persuaded me to go with him. So, did you enjoy yourself once you got there? Not really, no. <sighs> One of Rod's friends turned up and said Rod had got this job in Hull. And he was leaving in the morning. And how did you feel about that? It broke my heart. I didn't know whether I should ring and stop him or just let him go once and for all. Were you visibly upset? I was sobbing. Did anyone ask if you were OK? Peter, I talked it through with him. And what happened then, Diana? I went into the bedroom to fix my makeup, and I asked him to come and sit with me. Is that all? No. He had his arm round me, and we were kissing. Just a kiss? No. We were on the bed, kissing, and... it all got a bit heavier, touching him that. How did you feel about that? I liked kissing him. It made me feel wanted. What did you want? To be held, to forget all my problems. So, what happened on the bed? We were holding each other, and he, he had his hand on my leg, high up, so I pushed it away. Did you say anything to him at this point? No. We were still kissing, and he put his hand on my leg again, and, and on my groin, and he must have undone his own jeans, and he just pulled out my tights on my underwear. I tried to stop him, but it was just too strong for me. So this was the point at which intercourse began? Yeah. And you still didn't say anything to him? No. That's when I said no, just as it started. But he wouldn't stop. And I managed to push him away in the end, and I just got out of the room as quick as I could. I'm sure you did, Diana. I know I shouldn't have gone in there with him, but... But you said no. No, apparently Diana's still on the stand. I've just been told I can go home. Well, they're adjourning for the day once they finish with her. This isn't going to be some long, drawn-out battle. It won't. Peter will be found innocent and that will be the end of it. Yes, well, we don't know that for sure, do we? Better start making tracks. Do you want a lift? Um, no, I'll wait until the court finishes and get a lift home with Peter and Mrs. Harris. 
Fine. Bye. Bye. Thank you for being here, and thank you for being so generous with your time, and most importantly, with your cash. Cheers. Thanks, one, Sarah. Well, now the fun has only just begun because it's time to move on to our celebrity prize auction. And we have got some tremendous prizes up for grabs today. We'll start the ball rolling with, appropriately enough, two signed footballs from Liverpool and Everton football clubs there. And I think uh, they've been donated by local businessman Barry Grant. So let's start the bidding off at uh, 50 pounds. Who will give me 50? Well, go on, Sarah, I'll give you 50. Thank you. I'm laying it on thick. I know. 65 pounds, do I hear 65? Thank you very much. Well, she was supposed to be a married woman. She is. 80 pounds, who will give me 80 pounds? I'm trying to turn that to Barry Grant. Thank you. 90 pounds, ladies and gentlemen. Jealousy, I can't smell in here. Go on, Sarah. I'll give you 90. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you enjoying yourself? Yeah, it's been brilliant. Well, Karen and I are staying around to recover over a drink later if you'd like to join us. Oh, I can't. I thought I'd meet Derek after. All right, no big deal. Hello. Hello. Mm. How's it going? OK, so far. Good. Sarah enjoying herself? Mm, it seems to be. Barry Grant is very taken by her. Well, obviously, a man of taste. How did it go in court? I don't know. I didn't get past the corridor. Diane's the only person they're calling today. I should have been there for her. Well, you have. <sighs> yeah, but not today. I mean, she's got no one else. You've done the best you can. I mean, what more can you do? Mm. Hmm? Thank you. Excuse me, if you can take your eyes off the guest star for a minute. What? I was just about to invite you for a drink, if you can spare the time to listen. When? Now, when the lunch is over with uh, Patricia and me. Oh, I'm sorry, I've, uh, I've got somewhere to go. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could just have your attention one more time, please, I'd like to make the draw for the £10 note raffle. We've got all the money in here. And remember, there's still a weekend for two in Paris to give away. And the winner is... Karen Clark. Very convenient. Look here, I've got to go. I'll see you. Got a winner over there. Congratulations. I thought you'd gone Christmas shopping. No, uh, I left Dee Dee to it, you know. She said I was getting on a wick morning about the price of everything. Oh, <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge, eh? Not me. Not a man who travels first class. I thought we'd been through all this. Yeah, I know we have, I and mean, I understand everything you've said. So leave us alone then. Jackie, I'm just the same as you, you know, love. I don't like lying to people. A mate of Dee Dee's had an affair last year and I went up the wall. Well, there you go. Yeah, but that was then. Before I remembered what it was like to fancy someone. And to be fancied. Ron, why don't you take no for an answer? Because I can't. Come to Harrogate with us, Jack. No! I don't want to go to Harrogate. I don't want to have an affair. I don't want you, Ron. Jackie, you don't mean that. Right. Like this. That's what? It's always going to be like this now, isn't it? There's always going to be a problem. Well, I can't handle this. Jackie! I'm sorry. What for? My advice to you is sort out whatever's wrong with your marriage. This is what a kiss does for you. God knows what will happen if someone offers you a bit more. What are you do? What are you do? How can I work here anymore, eh? I'm packing the job up. Sure, Jackie? Was Rod a possessive husband? The jealous type? No. So none of the problems which so sadly and prematurely curtailed your marriage concerned other men? No, it was more complicated than that. I'm sure it was. Jealousy is a complicated emotion. And I would put it to you, Mrs. Corkhill, that one of the prime movers in your estranged husband's leaving the marital home was the fact that he could in no way handle the extreme closeness, some people would say intimacy, of your friendship 
with Peter Harrison. That's not true. He liked Peter. That he was jealous of Peter's helping hand with your learning difficulties. That he begrudged Peter driving you to work every day. That he couldn't stand the ease with which the two of you slipped in and out of each other's company. That he was tired of hearing Peter's name on your lips. And that just after a few short months as newlyweds, he felt so strongly that he was being replaced in your affections by another man. He had no option but to give the marriage up as a bad job. No. No. Do you want to bet on it, then? On what exactly? On the fact that I'll have Barry begging to be taken to Paris with me. What's the stake? On the holiday. I'm not needing him round by whichever part of his anatomy I care to grab in time for the new year, then you and Max can head for the Champs-Élysées instead. You are on. Shake on it. And on a job well done. Hmm, it's gone well, hasn't it? Yep. A girl done brilliant. Well, I couldn't have managed it without you. Well, or Margaret. Don't suppose it would have been quite so much fun by myself. No. I was wondering. Yes? We make a good team, don't we? Yes. And if I were to have a partner, then no job would be too big. You might have something there. How about it? Us partners. Partners? <laughs> there you are. What do you think of that, then? Ah, oh, the lovely Terry. Yeah, well, we want to give the baby a first Christmas to remember, don't we? Yeah. So, so we're... Oh. Sorry. It's OK. I was just going to ask what you're doing for Christmas Day. Snap. So? Uh, well, I've got nothing planned. Me neither. So shall we get us a big fat turkey, then, or what? Yeah, and I'll buy the mince pies. Let's see what these lights look like, eh? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, there you are, mate. Look. What do you think of that, then? Look at the lights. <laughs> oh, they're gorgeous, Terry. Thanks. <laughs> oh! you describe your estranged husband, Diana? What do you mean? What qualities led you to accept his proposal of marriage? Uh, he was nice, steady. <laughs> How does he compare to Peter Harrison, for instance? They were different. Oh, I know that. Chalk and cheese. Was Rod brighter than Peter? He was different, that's all. Different, but generally perhaps not quite as attractive. Rod was nice. So, we have established that rather quickly Peter managed to improve your mood to that of a willing party-goer. And once at the party, things went pretty much as you described. The upset with Rod's friend, hiding your tears from the other party-goers, and ending up sitting at the top of the stairs with Peter Harrison. Yeah. And from there, things moved quickly into the bedroom, the kissing stage, and then onto intimate physical contact. During that contact, did you touch Peter at all? Yes. Where? Just on his body, his chest and that. And what were your feelings for him at this time? I liked being with him. Just liked? Is it not the case that this was a moment you had waited a long time for? No, I hadn't even thought of him like that before. Would it surprise you to learn that I have at least one witness who will testify to the jury that they were under the impression weeks before the alleged incident that you and Peter Harrison were having a clandestine affair? We weren't. I know you weren't. But your behaviour in his company was such that to neutral observers, your attraction for him was obvious. That's not true. And that on the night in question, that attraction finally got the better of you. No! And you made a play for Peter Harrison, which resulted in your having sex with him upstairs at Anna Wolska's party. We didn't have sex! And that in your confused state, 
racked with guilt at having chosen to be with Peter rather than pick up the phone and try to salvage your marriage, the only way you could live with yourself was to give that sex, that mutual physical act, another name, a dirty name, rape. No further questions. Did you see Sarah Green on Brookside? I know. How about that? I thought I was watching Blue I Peter know, for a minute. Very confusing indeed. And what about Paula Wilcox oh, as yes. the judge? Mm, she's done all right for herself. Yes. She shared a flat with Richard O'Sullivan in the 70s. Mm, very yes, good. Yes, very nice. Anyway, I'll keep more Brookside on Monday. Or on Sunday at 10.30, you can catch up with all the goings on in the Omnibus edition. Still to come this afternoon, Judge Judy's at 3.30. There's credit card fraud, then an invalid check. Not good at all. And in the real holiday show at 4, a couple are off to visit Freddie Mercury's birthplace in Zanzibar. Very mm, spicy. I bet that's a kind of magic. I bet it is. Oh, that was terrible. That was Even good. I thought that was terrible. Uh -huh. Crikey. Anyway, earlier on, <laughs> we were looking at some of the stories in the papers today, and the ones we were looking at were uh, the fact that uh, student nurses are going to get maternity at pay last, from yes. now on, which we can't believe that's only just, you know, coming to practice mm. now. And uh, we were talking about Sherry Blair's dress sense, because she did go to the opening of Parliament yesterday looking... Um, well, it's a bit of a mishmash, I think Mish you could safely say. Yes, yes. I think safely mm. say. I think, yes, yes Hannah, very well put. Very, <laughs> very, very tactful. Um, let us know what you think about both of those things, the uh, student nurses getting the maternity pay, or what Sherry Blair looked like yesterday, or what she looks like any of the time. Give us a call on 0870 900 86 50. On the same number, you can take part in our competition to win Coronation Street goodies. leave a note for Patricia. Check the facts when she gets home. Oh, has Patricia gone already? Yes, Karen came to pick her up. An appointment in Chester. Client they're trying to woo. The first bash, the fashion show, it went so well, they're trying to cash in on the success. Do you want me to finish doing the shoes? No, of course not. No, um, sit down, sit down, relax. <laughs> no, I'm sorry that things are so hectic round here at the moment, you know. Not with Christmas and collecting for the round table, and things are very busy in work as well. But have no fear, they'll have my full concentration in court today. Maybe they won't keep you long. Well, my evidence shouldn't take long. Prosecution first, and then cross-examined by the defence. I hate it being cross-examined on Friday. It was horrible. I tell you what, if mine does drag on, they might find the questioning Father Christmas. What do you mean? Round table. I'm collecting on the sleigh tonight. I'm Father Christmas. You could wear your outfit for the court. That'd cheer the judge up. <laughs> I might just do that. Nice seasonal touch. I thought Friday would never end. Couldn't wait to get out. Just felt like it was going so badly. You'll be fine today. There's nothing to worry about. Are you nervous? What? Me? Nervous? Yeah, I'm wetting myself. Thanks for doing this, Max. No problem. Right, come on, let's go. Mum, well, don't ask what Toppy you knows which one. The flowery body, I need it for tomorrow night. Uh, can I have a word, Dee? Well, just wait a minute, will you? Jackie, if you want to wear something, don't put it in the dirty washing. Yeah, hey, can you get a joke tomorrow night, Mum, please? I'll try. Brilliant, I'm off. Look, Dad, are you walking around now? Don't rush your dad, there's no need. Jackie Cook will open up on a Monday. Well, actually, that's uh, what I want to talk about. Just let me get me started first. You make us a cup of tea. Oh, you, next time you take off your shirt, you don't do the buttons. Eh, uh, listen, I've got to go. I want to try and catch the M before she has to go to school. You've seen a lot of that girl. Eh, uh, yeah. Bye, Mum. Bye, Sam. Right. You have my undivided attention. What is it? Eh, uh, well, I just wondered if you could help me, you know, if you could help me out in the shop this afternoon. Well, why are you taking the movie out? Well, yeah, I'd like to, but, um, I don't have Jackie Corker in the shop, you see. Well, if it's just this afternoon, I could help. I thought Jackie Corkle does all day Monday. Yeah, she does, but... Hello. Uh, sorry to barge in. Uh, Jackie let me in. Hiya, how are you? Uh, well, I'm on the scrounge, actually. Uh, you said you had some stuff for the charity shop. I'm sorry, I forgot. You know those old curtains? I said Derek would sell them in his shop. Oh. 
Not long to go now. We shut down at Christmas, so uh, hoping to cash in on the mad rush. Yeah, I thought I was going to be running around doing a bit of shopping, but Ron wants me in his shop. Where did you say Jackie Corkill was? Eh, uh, I didn't. Well, the thing is, it's not just this afternoon. She won't be in all week. But any week, she's gone. Oh, you mean she's left? Yeah. Yeah, she left on Friday. Friday? You kept it quiet all weekend. Yeah, well, I thought she'd have a rethink, you know. I thought she'd take the two days to reconsider and then she'd ring up and see she was coming in. But it just happened out of the blue. I mean, what led to it? Oh, a bit of an argument, that's all. You know, she took something the wrong way. You know what she's like. Oh, well, that's easy to sort out it. That's all it was. I'll go round there. I bet I can persuade her to come back. Oh, no, Dee, believe me. I mean, you know, you'll only make it worse, love. She'll just think you'd interfere, him, won't she? I'd go myself if I were you, Ron. I mean, she's a good worker. She'd be difficult to replace. And a week before Christmas. Fancy falling out with your staff. You want an only staff. What was this argument about, anyway? Oh, it was just something or nothing. It, not even worth mentioning, really. You know, it was stupid. Dee, I've, I've got to go. Come round this afternoon and I'll have that stuff sorted out for you. Oh, yeah. Good luck with Jackie. Yeah, thanks. See ya. Honestly, I thought she'd ring. Well, she hasn't, so you'll have to chase her, won't you? Yeah, but I don't know if I can sort it now. What is it? Pride! Are you too proud to back down? No, of course I'm not. But it could be a Jimmy behind it, you see, winding her up. And I'd have no chance then. People don't walk out of a good job, not after one little argument, whatever it was about. Yeah, well, I'm just not very hopeful, that's all. Yes, but you've got to try and get her back. I mean, Derek's right, she's a good worker. And if you won't try, I will. I believe that she's left. Left? So I believe. Why? I don't know. Just put with the management? Possibly, yeah. Accused of stealing by any chance? I very much doubt it. I don't know. All right, girls. Oh, we'll know. Jimmy! Jimmy Cork here! Hey, Derry, slow down, will ya? You bring yourself out. Yes, I'm just on my way to court and I wanted to pick something up from the shop. And Jackie hasn't opened up yet, I know. Is it true that she's left? Yeah. But don't ask me any details, right? There's a few things I need to know. I could do with having a word with that Ron Dixon. Oh, well, I'll have to leave it, I suppose. I don't want to be late for court. I can't leave our poor Diana sitting there alone. <gasps> what an ordeal. Uh, funny when you're thinking, isn't it? A few months ago, and that rapist's father could have been in court if I'd decided to prosecute. John Harrison? Yeah. Robin, from my shop. What have we done with my keys? The rumours were true, then. Of course they were. That's that family for you, isn't it? I can't believe this. I've left the keys at home. Are you walking that way? Yeah, I'll have to go back. Hey, Jax, if you see your dad, tell him I want a word, will you? Hey, you're all right. Cheers, I'm not ignoring it. Yeah, you are. Know, I mean, if you're pregnant, you've got to do something. If? I am pregnant. I did another test at the weekend, and that was positive, too. Well, then let me phone Paul for you. God, it's all his fault, this. I've told you, I don't want him to know. You put Leanne, you should know what's happened. It's got nothing to do with him anymore. I'm not having a baby. I'm getting rid of it. What? An abortion? Well, there's no other way. You're not going to see me pushing a pram to school. Yeah, but, Leanne, have you really thought this through properly? Jackie? Yeah? Aren't you meant to be at work? Uh, yeah, well, I was just on my way. Yeah, it looks like it, no. Uh, Jimmy Corker was looking for you before. You don't know why, do you? No, he didn't say. Going on? I don't know, but we'd better join the queue. This is ridiculous. We've never had to queue up like this before with this lot. Well, it's the queue for the public gallery. I suppose we're classed as members of the public. Yes, but we're not, are we? We're the parents of the defendant. It's our son they've got to go back. I wouldn't shout about it if I were you. Sorry, I'm late. I had to get a taxi in the end. Jimmy Cork, he'll help me flag Ron down. It's all right, the doors are still shut. <sighs> Did you have any breakfast? No, not much. Are you sure you want a beer? Yeah. 
Well, as long as you remember what they said, you've given all your evidence now, so you don't have to sit through the whole of the case. I've got to, though. Couldn't stay at home and not know what they were saying about me here. Yeah, I think you're being very brave. I know you were down after Friday. It was a bit. I wanted to get you some chocolates, but the Dixon shop was shut. He's talking about chocolates. What did you think this is? A queue for the pictures or something? Don't get upset. You'll make yourself ill. They're all strangers. It's wrong, Barbara. It's all wrong. Hang on. Been looking for you. All right, Jim. Just thought, you know, just wondered if your jacket was in. <laughs> oh, I. I'll bet you did. Yeah, well, if she's not, I'll get off. I don't think so. I'm glad you bothered to come round, Don. We need to talk. What happened next? Well, Diana came out of the room. Which room? Our bedroom. And how would you describe her manner? She was upset. Can you describe her clothes? Well, they were in a mess, undone. How did you feel when you saw her? Surprised. Did you say something to her? No. Did she say anything to you? No, not to me, to someone in the room, Peter Harrison, who came out seconds later. What did you hear her say? Her words were, I said no. Are you sure about that? Oh, I'm certain. She said, I said no. No, oh, come on. Let's hear your side first. Why did you want to see her? Because I wanted to explain. You see, I think she's got it wrong. She hasn't got it wrong. She told me what happened. Yeah, but she's putting the wrong meaning on it, Jim. I mean, well, it was just a bit of fun, that's all. A bit of fun? Yeah. You more or less accused her of robbing the till. Yeah, but I mean... You what? She told me the till didn't balance, and you implied it was her fault. Oh, that, the till. Yeah, well, that was, that was just a misunderstanding, that was all. Come on, Jim, you know I trust her. Do you? And didn't you accuse her once before, eh? Same thing, fiddling the till. And didn't she walk out on you then? Jimmy, this is just cross wires this time, mate. Look, Jackie's got a good job down at Trading Post, and she enjoys it. And it doesn't pay too badly either, you know. <sighs> I've told her all that. Well, Leah, I can't you ask her to come back? No chance. Look, Ronnie, I don't know why she's making such a fuss over a thing like this, but I'm telling you, her mind's made up this time. Yeah, well, couldn't you work on it for us, you know? Talk around. She says it's a clash of personalities, and she just wants out. Accept it, will you, Ron? She's not coming back to you. It's gonna be hard without her. Yeah. Look, I know she's gold, you know she's gold. But you must have done something to screw it up. And now she's gone. That's life. You've lost her, mate. Will you put one of them wreaths on one side for me? I think I'll get one from my mum. Are you going home for Christmas? Yeah, she rang up today. Mm. Day? Yeah? How much for this? 10p, it's horrible. You know, she thinks she knows all about fashion now. <laughs> Just because she did a fashion show for... Patricia, <laughs> for which she stood me up. Oh, but it was really good, though. It was dead exciting. The money was rolling in. It's their pleas for Karen and Patricia. Yeah, you know, it spoiled her for anything ordinary, like nannying. Which is why she's skiving off today. I'm not. I was up half the night with Evelyn, so his mum said I could finish early. I thought they were supposed to be miserable employers. But they are. I still hate working for them. But they're in a better mood after their Austrian trips. Look, put three pounds on that. Oh, don't forget to come pick your curtains up this afternoon. Oh, so did you miss me on Friday night? Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm really glad you enjoyed yourself. It was good, though. And Karen says I can help out again if I get any free time. You know, mm. she was dead impressed. Sounds like you found your new vocation in life. Mm. Meanwhile, it's back to nannying. Not that you're doing much of that today. I came to see you, didn't I? Listen, my mum's been on the phone. She's invited us round for Christmas. What? Yeah. Means it me means that I've got to meet a lot of aunties, doesn't it? Well, it means that she's finally starting to accept us. Well, I'm really glad to hear it. How many aunties are Only half of all <laughs> <laughs> oh. So you'll come, you don't mind? No, no. As long as you promise to uh, translate the local tongue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I 
And is that the barrister for the defence, Peter Allison? Yeah, she has to cross-examine Max. Go back now to the party. Could you be quiet? When you heard Mrs Corkhill say, I said no, how did you interpret that remark? Well, from what I found out later on... No, I'm sorry. That was after the event. What did you make of it at the time? Well, I suppose... I didn't really know what to think. I said no. What was Mrs Corkhill talking about? What did the words refer to? I don't know. I, I mean, I didn't know at the time. I just assumed... So you couldn't have known what the words really meant. Is that a fair statement? Well, yes, but it did seem fairly obvious to me when I then saw Peter Harrison. But at that moment, Mr Farnham, you do agree you cannot be sure what was meant by the words. I said no. Yes, I agree. My auntie Maureen's away. She can't get a word in edge where she never shuts up. Oh, well, that might suit me. Save me doing all the talking. <laughs> Don't worry, it won't be that bad. I'll look after you. Anyway, enough talk of Oldham and Oldham folk. Before I forget, let me show you these. These friends of mine came round the other night. I met them through Bob and Romy. They're all fair friends of mine. Where is it? It's Romania. They're working out there, part of a team of volunteers. Are they orphans? Yeah, that's what they're doing. They're trying to set up an orphanage. But they're doing other things as well. Building a training centre. All good stuff. Oh, look at the little babies. Yeah. It's awful, isn't it? At least somebody's doing something positive to help them. I bet you wish you were doing it. Well, I think anyone would if they thought it'd be useful. I did work abroad once, you know. Did four months in South America when I was a student. I didn't know that. Yeah. Maybe I should have stayed. The priest over there could marry. I'd have had four wives by now. <laughs> Come again. I was thinking, actually, you know, now with it being Christmas, do you miss being a priest? Well, I'd be lying if I said no. I mean, don't get me wrong. Not once, not once have I had regrets. I made the right decision. But sometimes I, I do miss it. And you're right. Especially at Christmas. Because you'd be busier doing services and that. Well, at Christmas, people come to church not just because they ought to come. They come because it's part of their lives. You know, it's part of their tradition, their, their culture. And as a priest, you're in the middle of all that. You feel really valued. It's just a very warm feeling. Well, you've only got this place for a few more days, so uh, what next in your varied life and the old Farrell career path? Yeah, well, it may seem haphazard, but don't knock it. I mean it. Things can just turn up and you go with the flow. Yeah, but when we're married, we're going to need somewhere to live. I'll find something to pay our way. It's not just that. You need something that's going to really satisfy you. <sighs> look who's talking. I mean, who hates the job they're doing now? Yeah, but I'm going to do something about it. I mean, come the new year, I'm going to look for something. And when I've got something, not before, then I'll have me notice it. Ooh, if only I'd been born in older, mate. Eh? I might have had some common sense. Get me feet on ground a bit. I mean it, Derek. You're going to have to sort out what you're doing. My mum will be asking you when we go round at Christmas. You've already told the court you're a surveyor and you live at number seven Brookside Close, is that correct? Yes. The same house where Mrs Corkill presently resides, where the alleged incident took place? Yes. Could you tell us how Mrs Corkill came to reside in your house? Mrs Corkill was on her own. Her husband had gone, the house was sold and there didn't seem an obvious place for her to go. My wife felt that she should come to us. How long has she been with you? A couple of weeks. Have you got to know her in that time? A little. Do you live in a large house? No, not really. You must get on with Mrs Corkhill quite well, all living together in a small house. Do you? Yes. Thank you. No further questions. Well, just because he gets on with you, it doesn't mean anything, does it? It doesn't mean he's telling lies. Excuse me. I thought Max had all right for you, love. Could you keep it down? Quiet, please. Miss Bean, you're talking loud. That's not the point, you stupid woman. You've got no right to talk to me like that. I've got every right to talk to you like that. Look, it's my son's future that's at stake. And whose fault is that, eh? You should have taught him right from wrong. But then how could you? To whom do we get thrown out? You're a common shoplifter. A thief. Can we have silence in the public gallery? It's just more entertainment for you, isn't it? My son's life is being decided here, and all you can do is turn it into a circus. 
positive. Look at that. Leanne, that's the fifth. They're all going to be positive. You've got to go to the doctor. No, he'll tell me, Mum and Dad. Well, then you'll ask him not to. He will. He's known them for ages. It's the same with all the doctors at that centre. They'll just say you ought to go and tell me parents. Oh, look, why don't you give these a ring? It's a pregnancy advisory, please. No, they might get in touch with me, Mum and Dad. It's all too official. No, they won't. It's confidential. Look, you've got no other option. It's either that or you'll have to tell your parents. Oh, no, my dad would kill me. He'd batter me. He really would have told you. Look, you don't know that for sure, do you? He threw me out the house. Jackie, is that you up there? Uh, yeah, I'm with Leanne. Quick, she's coming up, Isaac. Wait, anyway, just move it, will you? All right, Jackie. Uh, yeah, fine. Derek's just come to get some stuff for his shop. Jackie, the state of this room... It's all right, I'll do it later, Mum. Um, can Leanne stay for the tea? Well, I'm a bit short of veg. Well, it's all right, we'll go around the shop, get some frozen peas for you. All right. You'll be living here soon. Right, I'm just going to drop some uh, Christmas cards off at the neighbours and then I'll think about tea, all right? OK, thanks, Mum. <sighs> Come on, it's safe to talk when I was at the house. Listen. I tell you what, no way to go outside. No, listen. I'm going to get an abortion without anyone knowing. I'm 16 next month, I'll get it done then. Yeah, but you don't have to be over 16 to have an abortion. Oh, and how do you know? It's only one more month, and then I can go through the National Health and get the abortion that way. And when I'm 16, the defo can't tell your parents. Yeah, but they say you should go as early as possible, though. But it will be early. It'll work. The one thing I've just got to do now is keep it quiet. That's all. Well, here we are again. It could have been worse, couldn't it? Was it right today? <laughs> Apart from my outburst. I know how you felt. Yeah, it wasn't fair of them to blame you. It was Julia Brogan's fault. Oh, I shouldn't let it get to me. I'm sorry. I don't think it did any harm. No, I'm sure it didn't. If things went well. I shouldn't get so wound up, Dad. I won't tomorrow. Right, I'll start supper. You sure he can cope? I don't mind if he doesn't come to court, you know. No, he wants to go. What about you? Well, I've taken so much time off work already. God knows what they're saying about me. Go in and brave it out, eh? Yeah. I'm dreading it, but I think I should. Sorry. Go on. Go and help your dad. Hello. Coming round to give you this card. Oh, thank you. We must get round to doing ours. Never seems time to do everything on the uh, run up to Christmas. I see your new neighbours haven't moved in yet. No, it's all been decorated and they've even moved the furniture in, but no sign of any occupants. I suppose they'll just move in quietly. I think that's what they are, I've been told. Anyhow, quite a professional couple. It's probably what was said about us. Gary! I'm up here. Oh, found the curtains. Oh, good. Hey, you never tidy in her room. Oh, look at the state of it. Remember Mummy? Well, she used to hit the roof when we left clothes on the floor. Must ruin the family. Oh, look, why are you here? I've got a bag of Tony's old clothes under their bed and they should sell in the shop. Oh, right. Well, he's well grown out of them. Oh, I think they're at the back. Yeah, I'll move the bed. Oh, God, the state of it. They've bung the rubbish under the bed and pretend they've tidied up. There you go. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Well, these should sell all right in the shop. Derek? What is it? Nice packets. Pregnancy test kits. Must be one of Jackie's scally mates. You know what girls that age are like. It is Jackie's room. It can't be hers, can it? 
and Brookside is back tomorrow at the same time here on Living. And in that episode, they've been talking, obviously just then, about teenage pregnancies. They suspect that someone is, and Leanne actually wants an abortion. Maybe what she could have done what, with was the morning after pill. And this morning, we've been talking about that. They're in all the uh, newspaper headlines today about this new pill that's available for girls over 16 years of age, over the counter now. We've had some great responses from you, some phone calls and emails. I'm going to read them out now. Uh, Mrs. Stevenson says, I think that it's a very good idea that the morning after pill is available over the counter. I believe that it will stop a lot of unwanted pregnancies. People are always going on about teenage pregnancies. Well, hopefully, this will cut the numbers down and decrease abortion rates. Thank you very much, Mrs. Stevenson. Very valid points there. Also, Angela Day, she says, I feel that the morning after pill is far too expensive at £20, especially for those who are single parents. It's really a ridiculous amount considering that you get it on prescription for £6. Fair, valid. And Tracy Colger says, I've actually taken the morning after pill twice. The first time I took it, it did not work as I now have a six-year-old son. My point is... Carl, sudden space of invitations. Suddenly very popular with the members of the round table. Oh, Simon Cass, he's never asked you before. Well, I'm afraid that's the court case. That's the only explanation. They have to treat me like I'm some kind of celebrity. What you mean? All those men are going to huddle round while you give them the dirty lowdown? Oh, Patricia, I wouldn't do a thing like that. Anyway, besides, I, I, that's the last thing I want. Look, all I want is a quiet Christmas with you. That's all I want this year. I mean, things are so hectic at the moment. I just want things to quieten down. Yeah, I know. I'm going to court with Diana this morning, then this afternoon Karen's coming round. We're going to have to work here till we get an office. What? Well, where else would we go? Well, it's a very small house. And besides, I didn't think it was definite. For real? Really for real? Farnham Clark Associates? Well, it's real, all right. No, why not? The fashion show proved it, didn't it? We make a good team. We enjoy working together. No, we're really going to make a go of it. Uh, excuse me, Thomas is nearly ready, so uh, I'll drop him off at play school on my way to court. Yeah, that's fine. Doing good to mix with some other children for a change. Thanks for letting me have the day off. Oh, we've got no choice, really, seeing as the defence has called you as a witness. Look, Alma, we know this is a very awkward situation, but I, I think the best we can do is all behave as normally as possible. I have to be on Peter's side. I have to give evidence for the defence, because it's what I saw. I'm sorry if it feels I'm going against you. We understand you have to stand by what you believe in, just as I had to the other day for the prosecution. Well, thanks anyway. Oh, sounds like Diana's out of the bathroom. I didn't like to hurry her. She has enough reason not to like me much. Well, I'll go and see to Thomas. <sighs> Civilised of us? Oh, we've got no choice, have we? It's a very difficult situation. I'm just treading on eggshells. I hate it. And we're always last in the queue for the bathroom. Ah, oh, yeah, that was my fault, I'm afraid. I told Diana that hot baths were good for her, good for relaxation, helped to relieve stress. I didn't think she'd take me quite so seriously. Look, I, I meant what I said before about us having a quiet Christmas. Yeah, but we can't do that to Nanny. So, Diana is the one that has to go. But we can't broach the subject now, not in the middle of the trial. It would be like kicking her when she was down. But whichever way the verdict goes, I mean, she can't stay here forever. I mean, she's too dependent on you. But if we kick her out, where would she go? A father's. So she's got to come clean with him sometime. Let's just leave it a while, eh? Just see how the trial goes. We can't go on protecting her forever. No, no, look, she's got to go. It's for her sake, too, you know. Morning, young lovers. All right, Jim. How long to go before the yobs move in and start wrecking the police? Frank, you're wrong. This isn't going to be one of those what's it, you know, rave places. We're aiming to go up market here. You know, the over 25s, the odd famous footy player, and page three girl. <laughs> I'll sell ours, Jeff. Hey, known faces. That's what pulls your punters in. And I'll tell you something. You're going to see more than one Porsche parked outside here, I know. Hold the uppies, eh? Be even worse. Oh, I like the sound of it. 
Any chance of an hour's round? What's my job's worth, love? What is your job, Jim? Director of security. Bouncy, mean. I'm practically a partner in here. Well, you can keep an eye on us, can't you? We're not going to dance on the tables. Then used to be a dancer. Professional. Did you? What, you were in the biz and that, like? Is that why you want to have a look around? Well, I just want a quick nose. And uh, you can show it off, can't you? Seeing as you're director of security. Yeah, all right. But I, I don't do guided tours for everyone, you know. Lynn, I'm not really bothered, you know. We haven't sourced out the Christmas yet. I really want a quick nose. Recognise these? Fair yeah, now. The pregnancy testing kits. Derek found them behind your bed. I wondered if you could tell me how they got there. Yeah, well, I've never seen them before. Well, that's a surprise. Are they Tony's? Yeah, well, I'm just saying they're not mine. Well, they're not mine, Jackie, and there's only two women in this house. Oh, I swear to you, they're not mine. With all due respect, my love, you have lied to me before. Oh, no, Mum, I'm not lying now. They're not mine. Well, they're in this house. Can you explain how they got there? How were they in your room? Yeah, but loads of people go in my room. No, not loads, your mates. Oh, yeah, that's very nice, isn't it? You're expecting me to split on me mates. I'm expecting you to show me some respect, not treat me like an idiot. I know these kits have been used in the house, and I know two of your mates use this place like a second home. Oh, you can't say that. Jackie, I can say what I like. So whose father shall I go and see first of all, eh? Katie's or Leanne's? Oh, yeah, that's typical Lannis, isn't it? You know, slag off Leanne. Talk about give a dog a bad name. Well, I'm very sorry, but I did find a half naked in the back of the van with some lad you'd found on a camping site. Oh, maybe I'll go and see her dad first. Yeah, well, it wasn't Leanne. So if it wasn't you, it must have been Katie. Oh, well, please don't go and say anything. I mean, the tests were negative. She isn't pregnant anyway, so it doesn't matter, does it? It matters that she's under 16 and she's testing to see if she's pregnant. And it matters that she's a friend of yours. Oh, look, just leave it, Mum. You know, you make things worse. Look, just don't go and do anything stupid. Jackie, I'll do what I think best. And I don't think the stupidity is mine. Do you? So you've got your dance floor area here, right? <laughs> Disco. Split-level design with your seating raised up behind. Very nice. Very unusual design. Spanish. Well, me and Barry thought it would work quite well, you know. Oh, you and Barry? Sounds like you're well in here, Jim. Me and Barry were like that, Frank. What's this, Jimmy? Guided tours? Uh, just a little bit of PR, you know, giving Frank and Lynn a little bit of a preview. Uh, but you're just on your way now, aren't you? Just going. Yeah, Lynn just fancied a quick look. Lynn? Yeah. Very nice. Listen, uh, you don't mind if I don't see you now, do you? Hey, it's no. just, uh, I want a quick word with the boss. Oh, uh, the boss is he now. What happened to you and Barry just like that? Almost partners. Hey, well, you know how it is. Yeah, I know how it is. See ya. Yeah, see yous. Have you had the invites printed then? Yeah, actually, they've worked out really well. Oh, good. Now, Jimmy, PR is Karen's job, right? No sightseers in future. All right, I get the point. Now, your job, I want you to whack these out. They're invitations for the opening night, one for each of the tenants. You could have asked Frank and Lynn there, couldn't you? Well, they're not exactly the target clientele. You've got Ron Dixon down here. Is he your target clientele? Look, Jimmy, it's going to be a big deal on the opening night. It's going to affect the whole of the parade. Oh, right, so his invite's just to keep him sweet, is it? I see. Look, he gets in on the first night, then that's the last we see of him and the rest of the tenants. Then we won't get any moans about litter or noise or anything, OK? Right. Get off and get rid of these, then, eh? Jimmy, do us a favour before you get off, will you? Put the kettle on two teas, please. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, no sugar in mine, thanks. I'll oh, see if there's any biscuits, will you, Jim? So, what else have you got to show me? Some thoughts for the grand opening. A Spanish fiesta. Oh, yeah? Well, it looks good. Be a little slice of Spain right here on a cold, wet Liverpool Christmas night. The poetry of markets, eh? You'll open a club on Christmas Day and something big. The point is, do you like it? But how much is it going to cost me? Well, the more money you put into it, the better it's going to look in the end. All right, you come up with some figures, then I'll see if I can come up with the cash. Shouldn't you talk to your partner first? Joe also operates out of Birmingham. I'm the one who's up here. Anyway, I can't see her not liking this. OK. You're the boss. My client, Peter Harrison, drove into Manchester each day. He usually gave a lift to Diana Corkill. Was there a time when you went with them? Yes, I did go once. What did you talk about on the journey? Oh, we talked about my employers, the Farnhams, being away on holiday, uh, about me being in the house on my own, 
Um, and Mrs. Corkill said I should have a few friends around for a small party. But I wasn't too sure what Mr. and Mrs. Farnham would say about that. And what did Mrs. Corkill say? What were her feelings about it? Oh, she said I shouldn't be worried, that I should go ahead anyway. And were there any other occasions when you saw the defendant and Mrs. Corkill together? Oh, yes, they seemed friends. Was there a time when you saw Mrs. Corkill go into Mr. Harrison's house? About two months ago. Uh, I wanted to ask Peter Harrison a favour, but Mrs. Corkill had gone into the house and stayed for some time. I waited, but she didn't come out. Was there anyone else in the house? Oh, I don't know. While you were waiting, did you see anyone else go in? Oh, no, uh, I think they were alone. Did you see Mrs. Corkill come out? Yes, I rang the bell and she rushed out. She was upset, her face was red, she'd been crying. Now, the party was arranged for the night of the 21st. During the evening, you went upstairs. You wanted to use the bathroom, is that right? Yes. Did you see the defendant and Mrs. Corkill? Uh, they were sitting at the top of the stairs. Uh, it was difficult to get past them. Why? Oh, because they were sitting so close together. Were they touching? Yes. Peter had his arm around Diana. And when you came out of the bathroom, were they still on the stairs? No, they were not. Diana was leading Peter into the bedroom. Could you explain that, please? Diana had hold of Peter's arm and she was leading him into the bedroom. Well, you did win a weekend for two at the fashion show, didn't you? Well, I was just wondering when you were going. I mean, it does concern me, doesn't it? You're doing the advertising. I don't want you getting off halfway through it. Don't worry. I'll tie it all up first. Right, I'm off to Patricia's. Yeah, have you any idea that you'd be taking to Paris yet? Only three weekends, Jimmy. What? Fancy a trip to Paris. Me? I thought you'd be taking the bus. Oh, well, the bus might be busy. He's got a club to open. See you. Yeah, see you, love. I see ya. Missed out there, haven't you, eh? Nice romantic weekend for two in Paris with her. I wouldn't say no. Well, who says I'm not going with you? Well, it never sounded like that to me. Anyway, you haven't got time to be swamped off with this place on the yacht. Look, the club will run itself once it's over, won't it? And besides, I've got you, haven't I? Oh, I know, it's, uh... Yeah, and I can run this place easily. No sweat. Good. Hey, listen, listen, I wanted to have a little word with you. You know about my additional responsibilities and that, and I was just wondering whether there was any chance no. of... I haven't asked you yet. You don't have to, Jimmy. You're not getting a pay rise already. You've got to earn it. Come on, Jackie's lost a job. Look, we've not made a penny out of this yet, have we? Anyway, you've got to make sacrifices if you want to be part of the team. True. I suppose all these odd jobs add variety, don't they? Look, uh, make sure they tidy up before they get off, will you? Hey, I meant to ask you. How'd you go on in Bacon, Ed? Let's go to that flat that Terry goes to. I got there, yeah. Did you find out who it is, he sees? Yeah. Well, go ahead, who was it? Strictly need to know, Jim. But well, don't worry. I'm on top of the situation. It's the second time he's been sick in the night. But the problem is his chest, it's not his tummy. Take him to the doctor's I would. Well, I was there with him only a few days ago. They said it was just a cold that would clear up. Well, it hasn't, has it? So you should take him back. Look, they won't think you're making a fuss if that's what you're worried about. Well, first time, single mother. I don't want him to think I'm just a pain. You know, over-anxious sort of thing. Isn't that what all first-time parents are like? You're dead sensible, you are. You do me a lot of good. That's a lovely present. Now, it's cold in here. Of course it'd do him good. You seen that damp patch over there? Well, that's not good for chesty babies, is it? Yeah, well, it's a roof over our heads. It's the only one I can afford. This will look lovely on the cot. You're spoiling us, you are. I'm all right. I've got a few quid. Well, you should be careful. You haven't got an endless pot of gold. I've told you I'm all right. Don't worry. You haven't even got a job. Hey, about that cover. Don't change the subject, you. No, it's important, this. Don't cover him up if he's warm. If he's got a temperature, keep the covers off him. Won't he get shivery? Well, just put him under the sheet. Otherwise, he won't get his temperature down. <laughs> Dr. Spock Sullivan. Yeah, well, Danny was sick a few times, wasn't he? And I know how easy it is to flap. And it's always easy when there's two of you. Me and Sue used to take it in turns to panic. Yeah, well, I've got no one to share the panic with. Yes, you have. You've got me. Here, you drink your coffee and then get him off to the doctors. Oh. Miss Volsica, 
you work for Mrs. Farnham as a live-in nanny, is that correct? Yes. While Diana Corkill has been in the house, has she ever discussed her marriage with Mrs. Farnham? I was there when they were talking, yes. It was a few weeks ago. Uh, Mrs. Corkill was upset. Can you tell us why? Mrs. Corkill's husband didn't believe that she had been raped, and that upset her. Can you tell us what she said, exactly? She said even she was beginning to think she hadn't been raped. And what did Mrs. Farnham say to that? She said Diana must stick to her guns. Stick to saying she'd been raped? Mrs. Farnham thought she ought to, yes. Did Mrs. Corkill disagree? Did she argue with Mrs. Farnham? No. Did you expect her to argue? No, definitely not. Why not? She has a very high opinion of Mrs. Farnham. You mean she looks up to her? Looks up to her and takes advice from her. Thank you. No further questions. Oh, he's fast asleep now. Good. At least he kept the medicine down. Yeah, well, he ought to be all right now. Problem is, for how long? I mean, couldn't you afford nothing better than this? Well, when I took this flat, it was summer. Didn't seem too bad then. Anyway, I'm not exactly rolling in it, am I? Not like you, Terry, splashing out on us all the time, buying us all sorts. Well, I told you, didn't I? I sold the pizza parlour. Yeah, but you also told me you wasted some of that money on the car. And the rest isn't going to last forever. Look, I'm busy here. Will you stop doing me head in about money? I just don't think I should take any more gifts from you, that's all. Well, don't say that. I mean it. It's not fair. It is fair. That's exactly what it is. It's what you're entitled to. What do you mean? Just take the money, Fran. It's what you're owed. By you or by someone else? Just take it and don't argue. If it doesn't come from you, I want to know where it does come from. Look, what you get via me is what you've got a right to. <sighs> comes from Barry, doesn't it? Don't tell me he knows where I am. He doesn't know where you are. All he knows is he's bunging me some cash. He's giving you money just like that? We have a new relationship now. I ask and he gives. How come? How do you think? <sighs> I don't like this. But what are you going to do? Kick off. Oh, come on, be reasonable. Stephen needs the money. So, you're a blackmailer in your old age, are you? You're the one who benefits. But the father's paying his maintenance. The only difference is, he doesn't know. I don't want maintenance. And I certainly don't want him. I don't want him to know where I am. He doesn't know where you are. Come on, you'll be fine. How are things going with Barry? You mean professionally, of course. Oh, of course. I think he's pleased with the way things are going so far. Yeah. He's confident about the opening. I wouldn't say overconfident, but starting up a new business, you need to believe in yourself. Mm. Look at me and Patricia. Do you think you can make a go of it? Well, we think so. Do you think we can? Well, I tell you what you need to do is uh, poach some of your old clients. Yeah, well, we're working on it. We've also drawn up a list of firms who are doing their own uh, marketing at the moment, but. We might be persuaded to farm it out if we can do it for cheaper. It would be nice if you could afford your own office. Yeah. Oh, look, I'm sorry we keep cluttering this place up. We need to earn some proper money first. Oh, Karen, I'm sorry I'm so late. Has Max been looking after you? Of course. How did it go? Don't ask. It's still going on, but I had to leave. Badly for Diana. You could say that. Well, I suppose his barrister's pretty good. Oh, no, it wasn't the barrister, Max. The barrister was only doing her job. The one who put the boot in was our nanny. Anna? She made it sound as if I were pulling the strings, as if I'd put Diana up to it. I would like to be clear on this. The moment when Mrs Corkill said no was that after intercourse had started. Definitely after, not before. Definitely after. Did Mrs Corkill qualify the no? Did she say, no, stop doing that, for instance? No. What do you mean by no? You see, when the no stands on its own and isn't qualified in any way, it can be read in very different ways. She did not say stop. She just said no. How did you understand that no? What did you think she was saying? Well, not saying anything. It was a cry, an outburst, a, a cry of emotion. Can you explain? Well, I knew how upset she was about her husband leaving. Um, no, I shouldn't be doing this, perhaps. That sort of no. You thought she might feel guilty about betraying her husband? Yes. And was this no accompanied by any physical response from her? Did she attempt to push you off? 
She did not, no. Did Mrs. Corkill talk about her husband, the problems in her marriage? Yes, she did. And what was your response? I tried to be as helpful as I could. When did she talk to you? I gave her lifts to Manchester every day. It was mainly then. What else did you talk about? Books, breeding. Was that an interest of hers? Well, she, uh, she had trouble reading. She was going to reading classes. Did you think that was a good thing? Yeah, I tried to encourage her, yes. She looked up to you? Yes. So, on the trips to Manchester, Mrs. Corkhill described the problems in her marriage. Did you ever see any of this at first hand? Well, I was at their house when they had a row, Diana and her husband. What was it about? His choice of job. His decision to leave the police force without consulting her. How did the row end? He walked out. Was Mrs. Corkill upset? Very upset. Were you concerned about her? Yes. I called round the day after to see how she was. And what was Mrs. Corkill doing? Washing her hair. And what was she wearing? A dressing gown. Did she get dressed when you arrived? No. Did she ask you to leave and come back at a more convenient time? No. And was this when her husband returned to the house and another row took place? Yes, it was. How did he interpret his wife's behaviour, the fact that you were in the house and she was in her dressing gown? Well, he thought she was um, coming on to me, I suppose. And what happened? He struck Mrs. Corkill on the face and left the house. Did Mr. Corkill give his wife a chance to repair the marriage? Yes. On the night of the party, he sent a message to her via a mutual friend for her to ring him. If she didn't, he said he was going to go to Hull. He had a job waiting for him there. And did Mrs. Corkill ring her husband? No. Mrs. Corkill didn't ring her husband. Instead, she went into the bedroom with you. Is that correct? She went into the bedroom. Not like you to be so organised. Well, there's food brought in now. Well, I'm on a run till Christmas Eve, aren't I? And I haven't got a single present yet. What am I going to get your kids? Oh, don't you worry about my kids. The dad'll spoil them rotten. They'll stuff their load on our Gavin. It's your Gavin I'm worried about. I want to get him something that he really like. I don't want to get it wrong. Oh, you won't. Just get him a computer game for his Super Nintendo. Nintendo? Yeah, I remember that. Katie tells me Chrissy's got a fella. Yeah, I believe so. Teacher. Met him on a course. Fair dues. I've got a girlfriend, haven't I? There you go. Open up. Oh, where are you going? To sort out Gavin's presents. Well, she's not in the best of moods, so I'd tread carefully if I were you. Well, I hurried back from court as quickly as I could. It's Patricia you should be talking to, not me. I just wanted some advice, you know. I want to buy a computer game for Gavin. That's Lynn's lad. Oh, right. It's Tony you should be speaking to. What sort of system does he have, do you know? The lot. He's got a Nintendo Game Boy, the Sega Mega Drive. Nintendo Game Boy, yeah, that's the one. What's the latest game for it? I think the one our Tony's got called Battletoads or something. Great. That's, uh, that's all the help I need, thanks. Frank? How's your Katie? Oh, we haven't seen her for a couple of days. Oh, usual self, you know. You know our Katie. Yeah. Well, tell will be in later if you need him. Oh, no, that's great. Thanks very much. See ya. I came back as quickly as I could. Oh. I'm sorry about what I had to tell them today. I just answered their questions as truthfully as I could. One, well, not quite. Two. You painted as black a picture of me as you could. I only said what I believed. Uh, Patricia, let's remember what we talked about this morning, shall we? Uh, how we all have to live together. I think that's right. I'm sure you do. Patricia. Well, I'm sorry you're angry. And I know now is maybe not the best time, but I do have a favour to ask. I'd like another day off. I'd like to go to court again tomorrow. Surely not be called again. Uh, Peter gets cross-examined by the prosecution. I'd like to be there for Peter. But your job is to be here for us. I thought maybe you'd understand. Well, then you didn't think very clearly. Your job is to be here, and if you choose to go to court, then you will no longer have a job or a home. The choice is yours, but if I were you, I'd be here. 
More Brookie, same time tomorrow, continuation of the trial here on Living. Coming up this afternoon, Judge Judy's here at 3.30, someone suing for a share of the rent. And at 4 o'clock, it's the real holiday show. A woman is off to Iceland on her own. Now, earlier on, I was talking about one of the stories in the news, which is to do with the number of mobile phones being bought for Christmas, and one third of them are actually uh, for kids under 14. I was asking about the kind of mobile phone policy in your household, and I've had a couple of calls here. One from Deborah, who says children need need mobiles, especially my daughter. She suffers from asthma and her school is six miles away. And Samantha says teenage girls should definitely have a mobile phone. Too many, uh, too many strange people are out on the street. So let me know what you think. How old should kids be before they have a mobile